Hey gang, Evan Sutton here. Today I'd like to talk about morphing waves in Absinthe. This is one of the coolest features that we have inside of this monster of a synthesizer. And I think it's about time we talked about it on the internet. All right, so uh, get ready, get set, let's ride. All right, so I'm gonna give you an example of the sound that I'm gonna play here. This is a little track I've been working on. There's not really any mixing on it. As you can see, most of my channel strips are pretty bare, but I've got this absinthe sound that I would like to show you how to make. It's a little bit of a vocal style bass, and we can use this technique for a lot of different things, but this happens to be sort of a bass sound. Let's take a listen. <laughs> All right, and if you want to hear it in context, this is what's going on here. So this is sort of the hook of the song. And I started out having just uh, just this sort of goofy lead that I have here. This is also an absinthe sound. We'll talk about the techniques used in this one. It's just really excessive pitch modulation. Uh, but it was sort of by itself and it was working pretty well, but I wanted to give it a little bit of a counterpoint. So let's take a listen to how it was before. Now that's nice, but with this guy, it just gives it a little, little bit of a pop. So uh, let's talk about how we make this sound. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create a new software instrument here in Logic. And by the way, this technique is exactly the same if you're working in Ableton Live or Cubase or on your Atari and you happen to have Absinthe. My mission in life is to save all of mankind. So I'm going to call this vocal bass and I'm just going to move all of the, uh, the MIDI on up there from this other track. So let's go ahead and open a fresh instance of Absinthe. All right. I'm going to go to Native Instruments, Absinthe 5. And uh, let's start out with a uh, new sound here. The way that my Absinthe is set up, it automatically opens up the uh, sound that I was last working on. And in this case, we're just going to start out with a single sine wave. So I went to File, New Sound and uh, the slate is wiped clean. So I've got this sound going here. I'm going to go ahead and, and just loosen up the amplitude envelope here in Absinthe. Now, if you don't know how to use the amplitude envelopes in Absinthe, you can check out my other tutorial on making G-Funk bass lines, which actually talks mainly about basic functions in Absinthe. But I'm going to go over to the envelope page, and uh, we start out automatically with uh, amplitude envelopes for the three oscillator modules. And I'll go ahead and just loosen up the release so we don't get a click. And now we're going to go over into the uh, uh, the patching page, and this is where we can bring in our modules, filters, wave shapers, things like that. We're going to use a handful of different modules to make this sound, but the, at the core of this sound is the morphing wave. Now, this is a really cool feature that Absinthe has. It's one of the only places where additive synthesis is used in Native Instruments Complete. Uh, that is, of course, aside from in the reactor library instruments, and that's like the wild, wild west out there. So let's go over here. We're in single oscillator mode, which means we just have one wave working. And that's going to work fine for me. And where it says sign here, we can click to choose a new wave. Now, under simple waves, we have a lot of different cool waves. We have some nice sounding sawtooths, square wave, organ. And this apparently sounds like a female. <laughs> So anytime we load one of these waves, it's just going to load it straight into the oscillator. It's going to play back, as we would expect, just a single wave oscillator, just a repetitive waveform. Now, if we go into the morph waves section, we have some different sort of uh, flavors that we can check out. Some nice sounds. So these are nice to work with, but I'm going to go over to vocal A here. I'm gonna go over to vocal A here, and if we just hit okay, I can just use this wave sort of as if it were a single wave. 
But if I go ahead and hit new, then what it's going to do is actually make a copy of that wave that I can edit and I can goof around with a little bit and that I can morph. Because these morph waves are called morph waves because they actually have two separate waves in there. You can think of this as being sort of similar to the function of the wave tables in Massive, where we can move between two or three different flavors of the wave or two or three different waves altogether within one wave table. This is kind of similar, except we're actually going to be shifting just between two separate waves, moving back and forth very, very simply. And we'll be able to edit these waves as well if we want. That's the additive part I was mentioning. So I'll go ahead and hit New, and you'll notice that it took me into the Wave screen, OK? And in the Wave area over here, this is a little short right now, but that's OK. In the wave area over here, we have a couple of different things that we can do. First of all, we can go and look at the two different waveforms. See how it says morph wave right here. We can always look at the second wave or the first wave. We can go to spectrum and look at the second wave or the first wave. And these yellow guys up here are harmonics. And these blue guys down here represent their phase. So we can really shift the waveform using either spectrum or waveform. We'll talk about editing some other time. Right now, we're just going to use this thing out of the box. And there it goes. It gave me the full size page. Um, and right here, we have wave one, wave two, and then we have the output morph wave. So we can move between these two waves by using this parameter here, the main transition. OK, that's what it's called. And it'll say oscillator A uh, based on which oscillator it is here. So if I hold down a note, and there are quite a few different flavors in there. This is just a, this is just a fun one. I really do like this sound. It's a lot of fun. Um, we can go ahead and start morphing around a little bit. Now, if you're a user of Absinthe, you probably are just assuming, well, we can right click on this parameter right here to create an envelope. Well, that's not the case. Uh, unfortunately, we can't just right click and create an envelope just like we can with everything else. Don't ask me why, but we kind of have to trick Absinthe into letting us modulate this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to head over to the envelope screen. And we're going to go ahead, and I'm going to shorten these, by the way. Remember, you can zoom by clicking on the left or on the top section. And I'm just going to go ahead and click where it says New. And what we'll bring up is a module. And then it's going to have all of the parameters that are available for modulation. OK, so you don't have to use this technique, this, this plus new technique, only for creating morphing. You can use it for just about anything that is available for modulation within the synthesizer. It's kind of like the LFO screen, if you're familiar with that, where you have lists of parameters. And these are the available parameters. What I want you to notice, and here's the real trap here, this is now magically called oscillator A main morph, which is a little bit more of an app term if you ask me. So everybody needs to remember that it's no longer called oscillator A main transition, at least in the envelope page. It's called oscillator A main morph. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And we have this envelope here. Let's go ahead and take a look at it. OK, I'm going to go ahead and zoom out a little bit. So we have lots of, uh, lots of room to work there. And I'm going to go ahead and just make a nice little shape for this here. Let's move it along down to here, perhaps. Just remember to work your zoom. You know, this could be a little or it could be a lot. Let's take a listen to this. Let's go ahead and listen to uh, the sequence that I have going and see what that sounds like. Work the nodes to get the slopes working the way you want. So I've got some overlapping nodes here. I've got some overlapping notes here. So what I'm going to do real quick is I'm just going to head to the perform section and I'm going to go to note and I'm going to go ahead and a I'm going to turn up the glide a little bit because that's always fun. So we just have a little bit of that. That's what I want. Uh, I like it. Do you like it? I think we both like it. Everybody likes little glides sometimes, you know. It's the spice of life. And then we're also going to turn poly down. Poly is on four right now, which means we can have four voices. But I'm going to turn it down to one. And what that is going to do is it's going to make it so that only one note can play at a time. I will warn you, this does make the synthesizer a great deal louder. So go ahead and turn it down when you turn the polyphony down to one. <laughs> You can turn legato off so that it actually uh, glides only between notes. Sorry, you can turn legato off so that it glides between all notes. With legato on, it's only going to glide uh, 
between overlapping notes. I'm going to leave it there for now. Okay, so let's go back to the uh, envelope screen. And we've got that going. That's actually working just fine for me. What I want you to remember, though, is if we go back to the wave section um, and we turn oscillator A main transition down. We are no longer getting any morphing, and here's why. With any envelope, the maximum possible value, whether it's filter frequency envelope or a main morph envelope, whatever, uh, you're always setting the maximum possible value of that envelope at the destination of modulation. In this case, we're modulating this parameter. If this is at zero, then it means that the envelope is worth precisely nada nothing okay it does absolutely nothing so we have to go back over to the wave screen and pull this up and you can, you don't have to have it going all the way up you know you can adjust the range so so that it's you can you can choose any range that you want but what i want you to remember is that if it's not doing anything then you have to put this value up so now we can do a couple of things to really top off the sound um First of all, we're coming pretty close to clipping, so I'm just going to go ahead into the fine tuning and pull the volume down. You could also adjust the volume of this particular guy right here, but hey, why do that? So I'm going to go ahead and add a filter here. Let's go ahead and grab, how about a notch filter? A notch filter is basically the opposite of a bandpass filter. It's going to actually attenuate a certain range surrounding the cutoff frequency. We can choose the bandwidth, and we can also choose the resonance, okay? So let's go ahead and I'll turn the resonance up a little bit. So I think this might be fun. I'm gonna leave this uh, kinda up so that we can come back to it and add some modulation. I think this might be fun to have some uh, modulation on it that really mimics what's going on with the morph here. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a, a new envelope for the uh, filter cutoff frequency. And I'm just going to go over to oscillator A main morph, hit edit, copy envelope, and then go to filter A1 frequency, edit, paste envelope. And now I've copied the uh, morph envelope into the filter A1 frequency envelope. And we can go ahead and adjust, adjust the values on the notch filter. Here's without the notch filter. It's pretty good, but the notch filter really puts it over the top, doesn't it? Okay, I like that. Now, another thing that we can do is add a wave shaper. I'm a huge fan of the wave shapers in Absinthe. Uh, you've seen my tutorial uh, on the wave shaper in Massive. If you haven't, go watch it. It's fun. Wave shapers can do all kinds of interesting things. If you want a more in-depth explanation, go check out that Massive tutorial. But for now, we're just using it for some distortion, okay? So it's gotten a little louder, a little tougher. There's without. Here's with the wave shaper, and we can go through and we can check out some of the different waves if we want. I'll turn it down for this. Let's check out a square wave. Really interesting stuff. Okay, I really like I like this broken speaker wave being loaded into the wave shaper, and we can adjust the amount of crunch that we get by using the NDB. So if we push the uh, NDB up, we'll, we'll get a little more crunch. If we pull it down, it'll sort of clean up the sound a little bit. Ma maybe not that much in this case. So there's that. All right, so that's a good thing. I really like that. Let's add a little bit more beef by just adding a sine wave on the bottom. And I'm just going to go ahead and clean up the amplitude envelope for B here, so we're not getting that long release. Let's bring 
right back. So that's pretty good. Um, this this is all sounding pretty nice to me. You could easily mix this and make this thing work really, really well. But maybe one last finishing touch to add is a filter in the master section. And this filter is gonna affect all of the channels coming through. And I'll just go ahead and choose like a four pole low pass filter. Let's turn the resonance up and let's, uh, let's create a new envelope here. So what I'm gonna do for this one is I'm just gonna sort of dip down yeah, let's just let's just dip it down so that as it comes in, it's pulling the frequency down, then it's coming right back up. And maybe I'll add one more breakpoint here just by right clicking, and so that we can really get that curve going the way we want before it heads over to the sustain segment. All right, so this is going to be pretty quick, I think. <laughs> And you can check out the different filters if you want. You can use the digital style filter. So there you go. That's creating a vocal bass sound in uh, absinthe using the morph waves and then finishing it off with some filtering and some wave shaping to really bring the sound full circle. This is Evan Sutton, also known as Astrolith. You can catch me at astrolith.net. I'm the senior sound design instructor here at DubSpot in New York City and online. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Come back for more and uh, look for this tune being released one of these days. Who knows? Welcome to DubSpot. We believe in providing you hands-on experience right away. Whether you're completely new to music and want to turn the sounds in your head into a musical reality, or you're an experienced artist looking to refine your skills and add new tools to your arsenal, we're ready to meet you at your level. For students of all ages, all levels, and all styles of music, DubSpot is here to help you achieve your goals. With course offerings both online wherever you are and at our school in the heart of New York City, we are ready to guide you through the next phase of your musical transformation. Whether you want to produce music, DJ, or do both, you've come to the right place. Come explore DubSpot for yourself. Become a part of our community and make music.